right, welcome to AP Biology Enzyme Lab, Devereaux style. So I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of the lab, and I'm going to show you how to do the procedures and how to properly set up all of your apparatus. So uh, the Enzyme Lab, it's not exactly how uh, the College Board has it listed in their lab manual, but it still gets all the major points across, and it's uh, a little easier to do. So um, enzymes basically can either put things together or break things apart. Typically, they're going to be proteins. All right, so how it goes is enzymes in the substrate. The substrate is what fits perfectly into that active site of the enzyme. It's then going to form an enzyme substrate complex, all right, when they join together. And then after that, the enzyme and the product or products come out. And you notice the enzyme is there through the entire time. So it goes in and works on the substrate, but it also comes out. So it doesn't have any effect on the products except for the fact that it will speed up the process. It doesn't change what goes in or what comes out. Okay, so in this lab, we're going to be using uh, hydrogen peroxide is going to be um, our substrate, H2O2. And we're using that because that's a byproduct of a lot of chemical uh, processes that happen in your body. Okay, so it does build up in your cells and it is toxic, so your body needs to break it down. It can be broken down into water and oxygen molecules, all right, and that says gas over there. Um, now, this will happen randomly um, and it will be broken down by light. That's why hydrogen peroxide is always in a brown bottle, because light will break it down. Uh, but that happens too slowly, that'll take a long time for it to happen, so naturally what we could do is use an enzyme. And the enzyme that organisms have um, evolved to produce is called catalase. Okay, catalase is going to make this reaction happen at a much, much, much faster rate. Okay, uh, and we're going to be using yeast. All right, yeast is a uh, fungus. You could buy it in packets like this at the supermarket. And they have uh, high levels of catalase in them. Their chemical processes, just like ours, produce hydrogen peroxide. So they use that too. Now I do have the powder form. I don't have enough for both sections of AP this year. So we're going to use yeast as our um, enzyme. There's plenty of yeast in there. Everyone's going to use it. We're going to have a stock of it. So everyone's going to be using the same yeast uh, concentration. So. Now that we have the basics of the lab, let's go look at the materials and the procedure. Alright, right here we have our reaction chamber. This is where the hydrogen peroxide and yeast are going to get mixed together. So I'll walk you through that in a second. So they'll go in there. This stopper is going to go on top. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then we're going to have some tubing that goes over this pipette. I kind of rigged this up a little bit. That'll go on nice and securely. And then that reaction, the byproducts, if you remember, are going to be water and oxygen. The oxygen is going to flow through that tube, and that's what we're going to measure. All right, here's how we're going to measure it. We have a pan of water filled about halfway up, and we have a graduated cylinder. The graduated cylinder also is filled with water. You could see if we could focus there without the light we can see the level of water inside of the graduated cylinder um, and the oxygen is going to displace that water so we could take readings of the volume of the airspace in the graduated cylinder and as it goes lower and lower down the column that means more and more oxygen is being produced by the reaction that's going into that cylinder so that's how we're going to measure it so let's take a look at how it works All right, first let's work on the graduated cylinder. So I've filled my graduated cylinder up all the way with water. Now we need to get it into the clamp. So you could use your hand, you could use, I have a little weigh boat here that I'm gonna use. I'm just going to put this over top of the graduated cylinder so it's completely sealed, all right? If some leaks out, it's not a problem. So we have this flipped over. This will be easier with uh, two people but I have the skill, so we'll just do it with one. All right, so that's submerged under there, so the water is staying in there. I can then close the clamp so the cylinder 
doesn't fall out. And there we go. We have a pretty full graduated cylinder. Um, I didn't really lose much, maybe uh, one milliliter, maybe a little bit less than that. So that is how that should work. All right, your lab manual says to get a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, but instead of that, I have a 10 milliliter volumetric flask here. You can see it says 10 mLs on there. And you can also see there's a white line on the neck of the cylinder. If you bring your level of liquid up to that level, that means that it's exactly 10 milliliters. So it's a little easier than the graduated cylinder. So um, each group is going to get one of those. So we're just going to fill up one of those to that line. And that's going to give us our designated amount of hydrogen peroxide. Maybe I'll get some bigger pipettes for this too. All right, that brings it right up to 10 mLs. Remember, get the bottom of that meniscus to that white line. And there we go. We have our 10 mLs of hydrogen peroxide. All right, this next part is also more easily done with two people or three people. Uh, I'm going to just do it by myself just so you can see how the, um, the lab runs. So first, what you need to do is take note of at what level your graduated cylinder is at to begin with. So at time zero, where does your graduated cylinder start? All right, so you just take note of that. And you also want to make sure that this is nice and level. All right, you want to make it as level as possible. Okay, so I have my reaction chamber here. There's nothing in it yet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take my hydrogen peroxide that was uh, just measured and we're going to pour it into the reaction chamber. All right, so we have 10, 10 mLs of H2O2 in there. Now, I'm going to have some syringes around here, not syringes that have a needle on it, but just a um, just the reservoir part without the needle that you would see at a doctor's office. All right, so this is a 1 mL syringe. So I'm going to draw up from our yeast stock, 1 mL of yeast solution. All right, so we're going to get the air bubbles out. We're going to flick that and bring it up so it's exactly at 1. So I need a little bit more in there. There we go. So any extra, you could just flick it and expel it through the top. All right, so the, here's the part that'd be easier with two people. All right, now this needs to happen as quickly as possible. So I have my chamber, I have my stopper with my tube. The tube is gonna have to go right into the um, graduated cylinder, okay? So you probably should have someone holding that tube in there to make sure it doesn't come out because that'll screw up your results. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, when, I'm, when everyone's ready, when everything's all set, we're going to put this, um, the yeast solution, into the H2O2, stopper it as fast as possible, and then insert the tube into the graduated cylinder and submerge the entire chamber like this. All right, so that goes there. Stopper. All right. And hopefully you can see the bubbles going into the graduated cylinder. That's all the oxygen coming up from that reaction. All right, so you're going to take a reading of the level in the graduated cylinder every 30 seconds for five minutes. This reaction is going pretty quick. Looks like we have some fresh yeast, and it keeps going down. All right, it's starting to slow down a little bit now. So if we see, if we find that this is... Um, happening too quickly or we need more uh, like bigger graduated cylinders we can move to graduated cylinders because we're already at the 50 ml mark and it's not um, calibrated for any more than that so maybe we'll try some bigger graduated cylinders uh, but you would leave that in there and that's how you take your measurements every 30 seconds so you could have someone on a timer and someone measuring uh, your levels every few minutes
All right, so that's the basics of it. You need to run your uh, experimental design by me first to make sure that you're doing it properly. If you're changing pH, you should probably change the pH um, of the yeast solution. So you'd have to make your own stock of yeast solution and use that. If you're changing temperature, you change the temperature of the H2O2 or the yeast. All right, so these are things you need to figure out and put in your procedure uh, in your online la uh, lab notebook before you uh, go any further. So if you have any questions, email me or see me tomorrow in class, um, and good luck.